We can't let you go, Rob, without mentioning this bombshell that you unloaded in this interview with my wife about Prince William's hairline. You got incredibly exercised. The great about... traumatic experience of your life was watching Prince William lose his hair. What's up, guys? Derek, moreplace18.com. Today, we're going to be talking about Rob Lowe. So this is a famous actor, and um, he's in his 50s now and is, uh, I guess, well-known for aging gracefully, as well as his appearances and different roles and whatnot. Um, like, it's often brought up his uh, appearance when he does interviews and stuff. And yeah, he does look fucking good for being in his 50s, for sure. This guy is uh, 56 years old and looks uh, awesome. And notably has extremely good hair. So he came under fire last year for, interestingly enough, the, the exact same shit. If you remember my Justin Bieber video where Justin Bieber slammed Prince William for balding when he was like 16 years old or something and then started losing hair almost a decade later himself. So he was like, I don't remember exactly what happened, but Prince William was starting to go bald and then Justin was like, he said in some interview, he's like, why is he not taking finasteride yet? Like, he could easily prevent this, and instead he's just letting his hair go to shit or something. I, I don't know what it was exactly. You should watch the video if you want to see what it was. Maybe I'm doing it a disservice. And some shots came out of Justin with his hair not looking too good. More recently, though, it looks like it's uh, it's not like a Norwood Zero by any means. Like, it's not this prepubescent fucking immaculate goddamn density right here. But it's certainly not grim reaper status like we see in this uh, shot here so whether he's had work done or that was just a really bad photo or what i don't know it remains to be seen but justin's uh genetics don't look uh well at least on his dad's side don't look too promising as far as uh, hair loss genes and whatnot so um you know obviously there's the uh, controversy about the genes coming from your mom's dad blah 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 and obviously that is not always the case as we've talked about many times on this channel. But Justin is uh, has notably experienced recession and thinning in his early 20s, so you can, it's safe to assume, considering he was talking about finasteride at fucking like age 17 or something, that he's probably using it. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's had work done, to be honest, and his hair looks uh, very good now. Like Justin Bieber, um, <laughs> Uh, let's see. I was just looking at the search bar results as I typed that in. Like, uh, on the Ellen show recently, this is what his hair looks like now. Well, he has, his, he has a hat on, I guess, so it's not too useful, but you can see close-ups of his, uh, hairline and, uh, Jesus, come on. I think he takes it off. He takes off the hat at one part. I'm just trying to find the part where he does that. Somebody, because a bunch of people sent me actually this clip too and asked me to do a video on it. I didn't think it was worth doing a whole separate video on him on Ellen taking off his hat. Anyways, I can't even find the fucking clip to be honest. But um, anyways, I, apparently at some point he takes off his hat and his hairline looks like pretty half decent. So, you know, obviously good on him keeping his hair, you know, fuck. Uh, it's not easy to do for some of us. And he is in fact uh, doing what it takes. And obviously he has the funds to get maximize all of the grafts he needs to if he wants to go the transplant route too which um, notably some of his friends have uh, gone so getting back to rob lowe so an article came out the interesting thing was the the bieber one was a bit older because he shit on prince william like almost a decade ago whereas rob lowe did it like a year ago like it's not <laughs> it's not that old so there's articles that came out in 2019 let's see where was the most notable one it's probably the huffington post so Rob Lowe claims his own insecurity made him mock Prince William's baldness. Um, let's see. Rob Lowe is making a bald admission. He said his recent jokes about Prince William's thinning hair actually had to do with his own insecurity. Last month, the actor needled the future English King Smooth Scalp in an interview with The Telegraph, saying he found the Duke of Cambridge's hair loss traumatic. He then piled on even more. I mean, the future, and this is a quote, by the way. I mean, the future king of your country let himself lose his hair? So, <laughs> so when I say British men, set a very low bar. Honestly, one of the great traumatic experiences of my life was watching Prince William lose his hair. He's going to be the fucking king of England. Lowe was soundly criticized for the comments, and he tried to walk them back Wednesday morning on the British TV show. Um, let's see. My, um, Good morning, Britain. He claimed the joke... 
Jokey comments about the Prince were actually self-deprecating cuts about himself. My point was, here's a guy who's fully comfortable in his own skin. Then on the other side of the coin, you have me. I can't even watch another guy go bald without, even, without being even more narcissistic and wanting to plug in the Propecia into a drip into my own. Lowe said, like, mainline it into his fucking blood. Um, Lowe then said he was a big fan of Prince William and chalked up the controversy to cultural differences. Um, so anyway, there's a... The original, the Telegraph thing, there's no, like, video interview that you can watch, unfortunately. But the follow-up... My God, I need to fucking get a Telegraph free trial to read this article. Okay, well, at least we have the summary of it. Basically, he is... Uh, Watching Prince William go bald is one of the most traumatic, traumatic experiences in my life. He's letting himself go bald and he's the king of England? Holy fuck. And that's basically what he said. Which, like, saying it in this way is kind of fucked up. Like, uh, him saying, I mean the future king of your country, let himself lose his hair. Some people don't have the choice, dude. It's not just about mainlining Propecia into your veins like you imply. It's not like that is the solution for every single dude, and that's going to be sufficient for everyone. And maybe some guys don't want to inhibit DHT. Maybe some guys want optimal motor unit recruitment in the gym. Maybe some guys want optimal neurological functioning. Maybe some guys want optimal fucking <laughs> sex drive. Maybe some guys want optimized physiologic functions in general, because Propecia is going to inhibit that to some degree. That degree is going to vary individual to individual, but there's no way depriving your brain and body of DHT is not going to have some sort of manifestation, even if negligible, to which some deleterious impact may occur. So whether that is in a you know erectile quality context, and you go from 100% quality to 95%, or it's in a neurological context and your IQ drops fucking 10 points or something. You know, there's a lot of things that are not really good about inhibiting DHT. You know, your fertility takes a hit when you inhibit it. There's a lot of things, dude. And um, you can't just say like, you let it happen. It's like some guys just can't tolerate finasteride, don't wanna take it or don't know about it. You know, that's fair enough. You know, if you, if you think it's worth taking, then by all means. But even some guys who do find it worth taking, it's not sufficient. Like Prince William had such aggressive loss. I don't know if an asteroid would have been enough for him, to be honest. Like that guy might have needed a pretty strong stack, given how aggressive it was and how early it was. So you never know. But it's not about let himself lose his hair. Like some guys, you get to a point where even when you're using like really heavy duty protocols, you have to let it happen. Because it's like you either get into the territory of, you're taking so much drugs that are so potentially side effect ridden and or whatever, like eventually the pros to cons ratio is going to be in favor of, you know, letting your hair go. If you're like one of the very, like there are a minority of individuals who are like so genetically aggressive in the hair loss aspect that they literally need what I call like nuclear protocols. And I'm not even, I'm not talking about like actual, like I guess some of them actually need like fucking HRT essentially for women, um, like transitioning from male to female hormones, I think there are alternatives that can achieve like almost that exact same pro like strength of a protocol without actually full blown doing that. And that's kind of the stuff I talk about in my more niche content. But um, with that being said, like some of those people exist and they cannot just take finasteride and be fine. Like I can't take finasteride and be fine either. Like there are a lot of fucking people out here in their 20s that can't fucking do, can't keep hair loss at bay with just a little pill like you can, Rob Lowe, until you're fucking 50, whatever. So, <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know, it was a bit of a shitty comment for sure, and it's uh, hard to walk that back so easily on the Wednesday morning British show saying, I was just joking, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're so comfortable in your own skin and I'm so narcissistic, I have to mainline finasteride. The way you worded it was just shitty though, you know? Like, you let yourself lose hair, you're gonna be the fucking king, dude. Like, what the fuck? It's not, you know, you, you can't always, uh, you can't just expect guys to fucking nuke themselves with fucked up drugs, you know? So anyways, not that finasteride's fucked up, but I mean like for guys with like hyper aggressive loss, it's not just about pop a pill and you're good. So anyways, this is him like apologizing basically on uh, the Good Morning Britain show. And this is uh, last June. I can't let you go, Rob, without mentioning this bombshell that you unloaded in this interview with my wife about Prince William's hairline. This guy's like, he's like laughing and we both know like 
doesn't actually find it funny. He's just uncomfortable and he's like, oh fuck, I have to talk about this shit. So, uh, what's this guy's name? Pierce Morgan, I think. And he's putting him on blast now for his comments, which is uh, justified, obviously. He basically is circling back to the article I just told you guys about and going to make him somehow justify whatever he said and be like, why the fuck would you say that, basically? You got incredibly exercised. It's the great about... traumatic experience of your life was watching Prince William lose his hair. Well, see, this is my thing is, I think this is a case, because I saw the, the hubba. And here he is chilling with his fucking Norwood Zero hairline at 56 years old, this motherfucker. <laughs> it caused yeah. on, on, in your side of the pond. And I think it's a case of uh, a common language. Uh, what is it, two countries divided by a common language? Mm. I like how in the corner of the fucking suggested videos from Good Morning Britain, it's just saying, do plus size mannequins promote obesity? Like, how is this fucking relevant whatsoever, dude? Because that was literally me slagging my own insecurity and narcissism. He's a stud. <laughs> I love him. He's awesome. <laughs> Rob, we've got to leave it, not least because the... the so, he's, he's saying that... He's talking about his own hair loss insecurity and somehow that makes it okay. Like, and, uh, I don't know, dude. Like, the way you worded it in your original quote was a bit fucking, uh, a bit iffy. I don't know if you can walk it back that easily and just laugh it off. The female viewers of this show that normally gravitate uh, to me are now <laughs> gravitating to you in a, in a breathtakingly unpleasant manner, and I would like to stop that and remind them. <laughs> so now Pierce is saying that all the chicks on the show are just fawning over this dude literally didn't grill him like at all we're just like so you like drop this nuke and fucking shit on prince william about his hair loss what's up with that and this guy's like yeah it was just a you know i'm just concerned about my own hair and it has absolutely nothing to do with him he's sick i love him he's fucking awesome i didn't mean shit and now it's fine they're just talking about how hot this guy is <laughs> like easiest fucking softball interview i've ever seen who's really doing this show. Senior uh, Walden being one of them. Yeah, my wife will be one of them. The first time my wife got up and watched this show for a few years, I can tell you that. Uh, Rob, great to talk to you. Wild Bill start. So he's on here to promote Wild Bill. Does he talk about the hair loss anymore? Let's see. Guys in the business and it's great to see you. How's your golf? Because I, I... TV needs to televise it live. You know, hell will break loose. Uh -huh. Rob, exactly. great, great to talk to you. Thanks so much. And Sam Seaborn. For wow. That was uh, absolutely not insightful whatsoever. So they didn't really talk about uh, the comments too specifically. They kind of let him off the hook with that one. But whatever, you know, this is uh, what Hollywood. I don't fucking know. So I, don't, I, don't, I honestly don't follow any of these dudes to know if they give a shit, if they don't give a shit, what the deal is. But um, at the end of the day, that was... <laughs> A bit of a rough comment by him and I don't think uh, it was justified because it's there's like this misconception in the world that it's just like like Bieber when he was in his teens he's like just take finasteride and you're fine it's like for some people that's good enough you know and that's why pr being proactive is actually good because that is how you prevent it from getting to a point where then you need more aggressive pharmacology and perhaps I would say it would be fair to say that the majority of people if they were proactive with something like Finasteride, right, which is well tolerated by the majority of people, you may never need to get to the point where you use the more aggressive shit. But for some people, they're still going to need to do it. You know, I know people who are balding in their teens and are on like most aggressive fucking therapies possible and still lose ground because they, uh, you know, have to go past just the straight edge, you know, 5 alpha reductase, 70% systemic inhibition. It just isn't sufficient for some people, unfortunately, you know, especially uh, like Prince William, I couldn't predict what would have happened, but I mean, just by how aggressive it was, I wouldn't be surprised if he was someone who needed something a bit more, uh, I don't know, aggressive. <laughs> like, there's no other fucking word to describe it realistically. So anyways, that is uh, Rob Lowe setting the record straight on his Prince William hair loss comments and uh, getting off the hook. So. Um, you know, it's easy for a guy who's in his, uh, I, I'd be interested to see what his protocol is. Is it just finasteride proactively since he's been like in fucking puberty or what? Cause you know, obviously he's pretty <laughs> mindful of it. So, and he's kept his hair up to now. So it'd be interesting to see how aggressive he's been or, uh, if it's just a very simple thing or if he's had some hair loss, hair transplants or what the deal is. Cause the guy is, uh, aging quite gracefully as, uh, you know, many people have said, and uh, it'd be interesting to see, you know, more celebrities coming out with their uh, 
with their protocols and their uh, hair loss stories and whatnot. You know, we had uh, Ashton Kutcher being pretty transparent with the Dutasteride. We had Dax Shepard talking about Finasteride. Um, what's his name? Fucking the guy who's friends with Machine Gun Kelly, Pete Davidson, being pretty transparent about his uh, very proactive Finasteride use to the point where like he's had no change like visually because he started it so early, which is uh, very interesting, obviously. And then uh, some other guys that I've talked about who have come out about their Finasteride use, I've definitely covered the, all, quite a bit of the celebrities that have done it. I have a few more on my to-do list actually that I've seen since then, but um, yeah, it's good. It's becoming more of an open topic because some people literally go their whole lives without knowing they can do shit about it. And then they find out when it's too late. You know, being proactive is the way to go because if you... It's way harder to get back ground than it is to prevent you from losing that ground in the first place. And that's rule one. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemonades.com for some of my deep dives into hair loss pharmacology, as well as obviously check out the playlist, the hair loss playlist on my YouTube channel. Subscribe here. Uh, follow me on Instagram, at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchy, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. We also have pharma grade hair loss medications through through the clinic, which is where I get my stuff. And we have uh, pre-designed uh, lab tests that are designed by me personally it's for uh, comprehensive health analysis and uh, even a pre-finasteride panel to kind of assess your how likely it is that you'll run into issues if you are to use it before using it or you know what your balance of free androgens to free estrogens is relative to everything else before you jump into it haphazardly and potentially put yourself up for risk of gynecomastia development or anything like that. Do the majority of people need a post a pre finasteride panel? No, they don't. But it's kind of like people who are going to be on a therapy that intervenes, um, slashes 70% of their DHT off of their uh, hormone profile. You know, some people do want to see their baseline hormones because you're never going to get that baseline number back again to actually look at it. So for me, it's almost like pre HRT blood work. Like that's how important I think it is personally because it's like you're literally making a substantial manipulation to your androgen profile. It would be wise to have a baseline panel done just in case, in my opinion. So, um, and anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.